Well, hello. Class, today we will be discussing scale. Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today I'm going to be talking about scale and how that applies to miniatures and dollhouses. Because this is a time where a lot of us are at home, I have seen several comments of people saying that they plan to start some miniature projects. Also, one of the most common questions I get is about scale, how to understand scale, how to change scale. And so this video is extremely overdue, and I think it will answer a lot of questions for those of you out there who are a little confused on how scale works. I'm going to divide this video into a few different sections and I will put timestamps in the description box below. So if you're only looking for an answer to one specific question, you can just skip on over to that answer. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what scale is. Second, I'm gonna introduce the most popular scales that you will find. Third, I will tell you a little bit about how to choose a scale or work in the scale you choose. Fourth, I'll answer the question, what if I hate measuring? And fifth, I'll try to explain how to scale a pattern either up or down into a different scale. There are two helpful references that I have created for you, which you will find the links for those in the description box below this video. I will be going through each one in this video, and then you can print them out and keep them in your home for yourself if you think they'll be helpful. So let's get started. First question, what is scale? What is this? A center for ants? Scale is when you change the size of something, either scaling it up or scaling it down so that it is a different size than it is in real life. One of the most common examples of this would be architecture blueprints. Obviously an architect is not going to draw a building the actual size that it is because the paper would be extremely large. Buildings are very large. So they will draw them at a reduced scale so that it is correct and the builders know exactly what they are supposed to be doing. However, it's drawn at a smaller scale. Obviously this is extremely important in miniatures because we are working by definition of the word miniatures in a smaller scale. There are several different scales out there and each miniaturist is going to have their own preferences in what they work in. If you're new to miniatures, this may be a good time for you to explore some different scales and try to figure out what you like. So let's talk about what the most popular scales are. Just a disclaimer, these are the ones that I have found most people work in. However, there may be some other ones that you have heard of before or you choose to work in. These are just the most popular ones and the ones that I wanted to go ahead and include in this chart. On this chart, you will see that I have the fraction written out on the left side. In the center here, I will have the scale's name. Most of the time there will be an official name, but sometimes I will find that there's a nickname for these scales, which can cause some confusion. So I tried to put every name that I could think of for these scales down to kind of clear up some of that confusion, especially when there's someone who's worked with scale for a while, talking to someone who's a little bit new, sometimes these names can get confusing. Also in the center section, I am going to put a couple of popular uses for this scale. So if you're looking to get started, you know some other items to look into. And finally, on the right side of this paper, there is the length of one foot, but in the corresponding scale. So you can kind of get a visual for how these scales work. The first scale you're going to see at the top is 1 6 scale. You can see I've written the fraction in two different ways that both ways work. In the center, this is called fashion doll scale or 1 6 scale. Some people don't consider this to be a dollhouse scale. Like sometimes there's like railroad scale, there's dollhouse scale. And so some people don't consider 1 6 to be part of the dollhouse scale list, but I do know that a lot of people who watch my channel work in 1-6, so I wanted to make sure and include it in my chart. Examples of use in this is going to be Barbie and Blythe dolls, and you will find that in this scale, two inches is going to equal one foot. 
To give a little explanation of how the math works on this, if you take this full size one foot ruler and you divide it into six pieces, hence the scale one six, you will get two inch sections because a foot is 12 inches and if you divide that by six, you get two inches. And so that's how I know that in one six scale, two inches is going to equal one foot in real life. I know I'm speaking about the imperial system right now, and I know a lot of my viewers are not American and most likely use the metric system. So even though I'm speaking about these items in the imperial system of measuring, I've gone ahead and included the equivalent millimeters in the length of one foot in scale so that you can go ahead and measure that for yourself and kind of convert it to the metric system if that makes more sense to you. You know what that means? That Americans can't handle the metric system? <laughs> The next scale you will see on this page is actually the most popular one. This is going to be 1 12th scale. It is what I'm calling traditional dollhouse scale. If someone just says that something is a dollhouse scale and they don't say anything else, most likely they will be speaking about 1 12th scale. Examples of this would be if you go to most traditional dollhouse manufacturers now, a lot of them produce Mo like the majority of their dollhouse stock is going to be 1 12th scale unless it is otherwise noted that it is a different scale. The length of one foot in this scale is going to be one inch. Similarly, like I explained before, if you took a one foot ruler divided into 12 pieces, you are going to get one inch pieces. So that's how we know that one inch equals one foot when you're talking about one twelfth scale. The section below that is one sixteenth scale. I'm calling this section vintage dollhouse scale, also said one sixteenth scale, like I said. Examples of this is going to be Lundby or Petite Princess. These are going to be dollhouse pieces that were created back in the 1950s and 60s and sometimes they come with like a metal dollhouse. I don't feel like this scale is used that much anymore, but I do know that there are some very big fans of Lundby and Petite Princess items out there, so this scale is still used. The length of one foot in this scale is going to be three quarters of an inch. The next scale is going to be one twenty-fourth. This is where the common name for this scale can be very confusing. This is often referred to as half scale. And when you think of something called half scale, you would think that it is one over two. Therefore, it is half the size of real life scale. But the reason this is called half scale is because half of an inch equals a foot. Because if you divided the ruler into 24 pieces, you would have half an inch equal a foot. So some people call this half scale, some people call this 1 24th scale. I'm really sorry if I've confused you guys in the past by calling something half scale and not explaining that. As you can start to see, as the lower number of the fraction gets larger, the scale is getting smaller. My example line on the right is getting smaller. So if you are looking at a scale, trying to figure out what it is, the larger that number is, the smaller the scale is going to be. The next scale is going to be 1 48th scale. This is also referred to as quarter scale. For the same reason that half scale is often referred to as half scale, quarter scale gets its name from the fact that a quarter inch equals a foot. A popular example of this would be equivalent to O scale when it comes to railroad scales. I'm not going to go over railroad scales today and I'm sure there's a whole nother video done by someone who knows much more about it, but if you were interested in working in quarter scale, you could go to the railroad section of your local hobby store and look at the railroad items, look at the O scale specifically, and you will start to see this scale and items you could possibly use in your project. And if you didn't think it could get any smaller, the smallest one I have on this list is 1 144th scale. And if you think people do not work in this scale, you are very wrong. There are some very passionate artists that work in 1 144th scale. I call this dollhouse for a dollhouse scale because this scale is literally 12th scale within 
a project that's already been scaled down to 12th scale. Therefore, the result of working in 144th scale is that you have a dollhouse inside of a dollhouse. That's how small it is. In this scale, you're going to have 3 30 seconds of an inch equal a foot. This also translates to 2 millimeters. I do think once you get to this scale, you really need to be working in millimeters because keeping up with 30 second inches is just yeah work in millimeters if you if you plan to go this small to the metric system <laughs> the last category i have here has a question mark and i'm calling this mismatch scale or phoebe buffet scale if you're not a fan of friends or have never watched friends you may not understand this reference but phoebe buffet famously in this tv series created a dollhouse. It was out of scale using food and and um, this was in comparison to Monica's dollhouse that was in scale. She had a china cabinet, everything was perfectly done and Phoebe's dollhouse, Monica felt, was a little off I guess. So check it out. <laughs> What's this? That's a dog. Every house should have a dog. <laughs> Not one that can pee on the roof. But I wanted to include this in here because I do think there's a bit of artistic expression that can be reached when you decide to ignore scale. So if you're not one that likes to be tied down to a specific scale and you just want to find things that you think are interesting and will work together, go for it. There's nothing holding you back saying you have to be in perfect scale. If you think it works, just try it out. After all, I do consider miniatures an art form and that is up to each and every artist to determine. Come dinosaur, we're not welcome in the house of no imagination. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the popular scales. Now you may be wondering, well, how do I know which one to work in? How do I decide what is going to be best for the result that I want? And I can't really tell you a definite answer, but I can give you some tips so that possibly you can help yourself figure it out. The best thing to do is to figure out how big you want your final project to be. For example, if you're creating an entire house, but you don't have room for an Adams Family type mansion, but you still want to create a mansion, you may start looking into half scale houses and see if that size will work for the space that you have available. This is the difference between a 12th scale and a half scale right here. So you can see them next to each other. There's quite a difference in the scale of these two pieces. And one reason I wanted to do a half scale piece is because my 12th scale house takes up quite a bit of room. If you already know what scale you want to work in and you want to just get started, the best way to do that is to start by measuring things around your own house. Say you want to make a chair. Go find a chair, measure how high the seat is off the floor, measure how high the back is from the floor, measure how wide and how deep it is, and that will give you a starting point for creating your miniature. Then you can use the chart that I provided you so that you can figure out if you measured in feet, how many feet in miniature that would be. For example, if I have a wing back chair that is three feet tall, then I know in miniature it's going to be three inches tall in 12th scale. In half scale, it would be one and a half inches tall. Here's a quick and easy example using this wine bottle. I'm just gonna take a normal ruler, line it up, and measure how long it is. It's roughly one foot, and so I'm going to start transferring that into the correct scale that I choose by using my chart. If I were to be working in one sixth scale, I would know that my bottle would end up being about two inches tall for it to be correct in scale. If I was going to work in one twelfth scale, I know it would be about an inch long, and so on and so forth down the line. This one's pretty easy because it's exactly a foot. I can also measure miniatures that I already have. So for example, I have this door. I'm going to use my ruler to get the height, which is about six and a half inches. And then I'm also going to measure the width, which is about three inches. And normally a real life-size door is about seven by three. 
Therefore, I know that this is a 12th scale door. There are also things online such as a scale calculator, which can help you figure that out without having to do the math yourself. And I think you'll find once you start working in one certain scale consistently, you will start to get an eye for it. I've worked in 12 scale for so long that I can literally walk into a store, be it an antique store or a dollhouse store, and I, I know what scale things are because I've worked in it so consistently. So if you feel like you're struggling at first, give yourself some time to get used to the scale and then your brain will start clicking in. Our brains are amazing machines. It'll start picking it up and before long you will just know whether something is the right scale or not. Also, if you're looking to create something that you don't have in your home and you want to figure out the measurements for that, there are so many measurements that you can find online. For example, when I created the Hoosier cabinet, I did not have one in my home for me to measure. I went online and typed in Hoosier cabinet dimensions and they popped up almost immediately. Then you just have to translate that into the scale that you're interested in working in and there you go. Okay, so now we're on to the category of what if I hate measuring? <laughs> There's bound to be some of you out there who hate measuring, don't want to deal with fractions, but you still really want your projects to be in scale. So what's my suggestion for that? Simply, I will just come and stand in your dollhouse and help you with scale. What I mean by that is I actually have a resource that you can find below in the description box below this video, and they are human scaled figures of me in each and every one of the scales that I have mentioned previously. Therefore, if you are working in 12 scale, you can cut out the 12 scale figure and put it in your project. How does this help with scale? Well, as I mentioned previously, our brains are extremely powerful machines and our eyes assist the brain in making comparisons. And so if you put a human figure into one of your projects, your brain can very easily decide whether something is the right size or not. So of course, this is kind of a joke resource. However, it could be helpful to you if you just need a human figure to put in your project. I just added a photo of myself. However, if you wanted to put your grandma or your mom or your dad or your best friend in your project, just take their picture, put it over my picture, but make sure they're the same scale and then cut them out and you can have your very own family member standing in your project, but at the correct scale. This is the resource that you'll find below in one of the links. And I have put a one inch bar on here. So when you print it off, make sure that bar stays at one inch. And then you'll know that all these figures are correctly scaled. I've also put the corresponding scale below each picture so you know which one that you're dealing with. These are really easy to cut out, and if you want to put them onto a piece of cardboard, then you can create kind of like an actual cardboard cutout, and all you do is fold it so that it is creates this like half moon floor, and then put a little triangle on the back to keep it standing up, and then make sure to mark which scale it is on the back of the cardboard cutout. Obviously, you only need to do this for the scale you're actually working in. Uh, I went ahead and did several of them because I am going to show you some comparisons, just further proof of how our brains work so that we can really easily see the difference in scales. Um, but you can create all of them if you want to, or like I said, put a picture of someone else on top of my picture. This is a one-sixth era. On the left side, you can see a 1 6th chair in the middle and then a 1 12th on the right. And so you can definitely see how our brains really easily click onto whether the scale is correct or not. I'm replacing that chair now with a 1 12th scale, and you can see it makes much more sense with my cutout. The 1 16th scale, which is on the left now, does not make sense anymore. The chair looks way too large. And I can continue to do this and each time you will be able to tell which one is the correct scale just by comparing the human form with the item. 
Obviously, I'm doing this with chairs at this moment, but the same thing applies to accessories. So if there was, say, a miniature loaf of bread and I put all the people next to it, you would be able to tell which loaf of bread was the correct scale for the human being. This also goes for houses, all sorts of things. Now, I do not have a quarter scale chair because I do not work in quarter scale, but I will show you the quarter scale person and the 144th scale person in comparison with the half scale chair. Here you can see all of them completely lined up with all the chairs I have access to. And then I'll add in the quarter scale person standing below the 1 6 scale chair and then our little 144 scale person that I didn't even bother to cut out. Again, like I said, it works with houses. So if, say, you're going dollhouse shopping, I don't know, maybe there's a dollhouse store near you that will open soon and um, you want to take a figure and make sure that the house is in scale. Uh, you can definitely do that. And of course, I had to hang out with Morticia a little bit, which made me realize either she's really tall or I'm kind of short. I think I made her a little bit tall. This is a half scale house. So I've put the half scale figure in the doorway. You can see that it works really well. It looks like a person standing in the doorway. But the 1 16th scale person is just a little bit too large. I would definitely have to duck down. When you're done with these things, it's really fun to just hide them around the house. Go to your parents' house, hide them in your parents' house. Although probably hide you because if they don't know who I am, that might be even a little bit more weird. But they're fun little characters just to hang around the house and have a little fun with. So finally, I'm going to talk to you about how to scale a pattern up or down. Booyah! You got shrunk, tiny mouth flash. If you've been around for a while, many of you know that I have provided patterns for you and they are always in 1 12th scale. I know some of you work in 1 6th scale, some of you work in half scale, and so I have gotten several comments of how do I scale this pattern so that it works for me. On the resource page that I used previously, I'm going to try and explain it to the best of my ability. I have two dollhouse miniatures here that are the exact same pattern but different scales. This one is in 1 12th scale and this one is in 1 24th scale. So this one is half the size of the 12th scale pattern. One thing I want to express that I think always kind of messes people up is even though you scale the height and the width, you also need to scale the thickness of your material. That's very important. As you can see here, the 12 scale item, the thickness of the material is twice as thick as the smaller item. So keep that in mind. Because all of the dollhouse patterns that I have ever given out are 1 12th scale. I'm going to show you first how to scale a 1 12th pattern if you want to change it either up or down. So if you're starting with a 1 12th scale pattern, you want to mark that at 100%. This is the original. It's 100% correct. That's 1 12th scale, 100% correct. That's the one we're starting with. If I want to scale down to 1 24th or half scale, it is going to be half the size of my original pattern or 50%. Knowing the percentage is going to be helpful whether using a computer or a Xerox machine to do this. If you're using a computer program, you're going to want to select all your pieces from the original pattern. You want to make sure that you are scaling by percentage and that you have locked your proportions so that both the height and the width change the same. You want to set it to 50%, which is the percentage we want to go into 24th scale. And there you go. You hit apply and your pieces shrink down to 1 24th scale. Same thing goes if you want to size up. If you want to go to 1 6th scale from a 1 12th scale pattern, this is going to be twice the size or 200% of the original pattern. Go back into your program. You're going to select your pieces. Go to scale. Make sure you're on percentage. Make sure your proportions are locked. And then you want to type in 200 
for the percent. Again, this is for both height and width. Once you have that done, you can hit apply and then your pieces will get larger by 200%, which is exactly what we want for one sixth scale. Now, if you're using a Xerox machine or a copy machine, you can do the same exact thing. Uh, when it says scale up, you wanna put in 200%. This may just take a little bit more finagling to make sure all the pieces end up on a page. It's a similar process for getting into any of these other scales, especially from 1 12th scale. 1 16th is going to be 75% of 1 12th scale, and a quarter scale is going to be 25% of 1 12th scale. And so you can change your pattern according to these percentages. Now, say you're starting from a different scale. You found a Barbie scale pattern and you want to use it in 12th scale. So since we're starting with a 1 6th scale pattern, that is now going to be our new 100%. That is our original pattern, so it gets the 100%. If I want to scale it down to a 1 12th scale pattern, 1 12th scale is half the size, or 50% of 1 6th scale, so I'm gonna mark that at 50%. And when I go into my computer program and I wanna scale down the pieces, or if I'm doing it on a copy machine, I'm going to put in 50%. Now my items that were originally 1 6th scale should be in 1 12th scale. So that's all I have for you guys on scale today. Um, it's kind of like not the most interesting topic, but it's an important one when it comes to miniatures. Because even though I do think it's fine to be free and use mismatched items if you want to, this is the coolest house ever! <laughs> some people do strive to have a realistic looking miniature. And if you want to have realism in your project, it's important to understand scale and how to use it. So if you are one of those people that is starting a brand new project, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys are working on. I am going to hopefully soon get back to some of my normal, regularly scheduled projects. This time has just been interesting for everyone as we adjust, and uh, I'm thankful for you guys as a community just um, being kind to each other and lifting each other's spirits. So make sure that you take care of yourselves, that you stay healthy, reach out and don't touch anyone, but show some kindness and um, encouragement. I think that's it. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. I went online and just typed in Hoosier Cad, Hoob, Hoober, Hoosier, Lundby and Pratit. <sighs> I can't talk. But the reason why this is called half scale is because an half. Nope, 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 nope. That's not right. <laughs>